Welcome back to day five of Masters Shanghai and our final match of the Swiss stage. It's Leviathan going up against Foot Esports, a classic America's EMEA fight. Of course, I'm Golden Boy here alongside with Mimi and Kukuka, who pretty much nearly had a heart attack multiple times in that last game. So how's your heart rate doing, girl? I'm okay. I'm still recovering, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that the internet is on my side. I think that the match that we just witnessed was unreal. FBX has nothing to be ashamed of. That was, they have given us the most exciting games that we have had so far. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see them in the next international event. Super cool. uh, but happy for him. It's still so heartbreaking to yeah. see them lose in that fashion. I, I was watching with the Chinese casters and it was just, I'm sure for every fan from this region who is watching that game. It's got to be heartbreaking to see them go down like that. But it is proof of the growth of the CN region. The sure. FPX yeah. squad is able to play games like that uh, against the caliber of teams. They've been able they to They went 0-2, 0-2 against uh, KC and Lauda Madrid. And now they were uh, pretty much contending for a playoff spot, right? Like incredible, truly incredible. But in any case, so let's go ahead and move on to our next matchup. Another exciting game because we have Leviathan taking on foot. Now here's the thing, right? Leviathan, they needed a massive win to stay alive in this competition and they got it in the likes of T1. This was the game that reminds you that Leviathan was built as a super team. They decimated T1 in particular. I think with a lot of hero plays, that's what defined Breeze. But going into this second map as well. Love had a super strong defense. I think do, they do a great job of kind of hiding their strong side on this map and having a ton of different setups with the Cypher and then super effective flood retakes. They were just winning retake after retake. It was really a beautiful, clean match from Love that has to give you confidence in this team. Yeah, exactly. It has to give you confidence, but it also the way that they were playing so comfortably is is very difficult to have a preparation so down to the T uh, uh, when you have such little time. But in this scenario, in Instead of a left being like, okay, well, you know, the things are, are not working, now we're going to go home. We see a left that, that is very comfortable with the situation, yeah. that everything's going for it's, them. It can't be a shocker, though, with the, with the caliber of players on this team, that they're rocking up to a global event and, and feeling at home. Very true. Very, very true. Well, first, let's go ahead, though, real quick and check in with Tex and hear what he had to say heading into today's matchup. I'm now joined by Tex from Leviathan. Now, today you get to go up against an EU team for the first time uh, ever. I wanted to get your thoughts. What do you think about the EMEA region and foot in particular? Yeah, I think the EMEA region is really interesting. They play, you know, some weird comps. They play together. I think they, they play like a smart region. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. And foot as a team, they definitely play crazy. Um, they take their timings. They have a lot of aimers and they know it. And they play to that play style. So I think it'll be really fun to play that on stage. Oh, it's going to be a fun game indeed. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Now, that guy right there has been stepping up big time. And we saw yesterday him and Mazzino really have some standout performances. Some could even say that he, you know, Tex right there, he's the Scotty Pippen to Osbos's Michael Jordan. You guys know that reference, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. What does that mean? Scottie good Pippen. basketball player who played with another I know who really Michael good Jordan basketball player. Oh, yes. Basically, yeah, but, Michael but Jordan what wouldn't... Is, what is, is it like a friendship? Let me friendship help you. Or? Michael Jordan wouldn't have been as successful if Scotty Pippen wasn't on his team. Scotty Pippen, Pippen was a big part of that. There are a lot like of basketball fans. Support support supportive his... player okay. who's also really good. And that's exactly what Mazzino is. Throughout the America's run, this was one of those guys on this team that I was just so impressed by. He was always a shooter when he played with crew. But I think he's really melded into such a team player. The supportive utility he yeah. has for Ospos yeah. is always consistently ex excellent. And he wins a ton of clutches just off his own skill as well. And he was really stepping up that last series. Yeah, exactly. But the, the night and day with his first series, like the performance was a complete shift when we, when we think about Mazzino, he is going to need to step up today yeah. because as we were just hearing in the interview, a role like his with the initiation and also the capabilities of, of shutting the other team down, knowing how Foot has been playing the last games that they've played, yeah. it's going to be necessary. Yeah, and, and also he's he's a, a little bit of a less known name than someone like Ospos, but he's still super experienced on the global stage, making multiple appearances mm -hmm. and runs with Leviathan. This guy is a veteran, and he shows in the server. All this reinforces that. I'm going to have to have you guys watch some Michael I Jordan knew who he was. I would, I Not you, to. but her. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and move on to Foot Esports. Now, they scored a massive win over Dragon Ranger Gaming yesterday to stay alive, but here's the thing. Dragon Ranger, in comparison to the other re or teams in the Chinese region, you know, were definitely ranked lower. And we saw a squad that came out to play and mm. they took it to Foot Esports. And I think that that probably gave them some pause because I'm sure a lot of people were expecting Foot to honestly run over 
DRG. Yeah, exactly. And at the beginning of both of the maps, it was a little bit like that, right? We they saw, were running we saw, them over. <laughs> exactly. On buying so many rounds in a row that went for the side of foot. But then after the first eight, we see a foot that are just getting too confident, maybe too cocky to just, you know, we're just going to send it. We're just going to keep running it down and we're going to close the map. And that, that is when things started to get complicated. Why cannot you just pull down and keep playing the game round by round? And, uh, you know, you're, you're giving too much to the other team to actually come back onto you. And DRG, we're taking those opportunities. And let me tell you, Lev is going to do the same. And Texas, right? Yeah. They're a team that, that takes a lot of timings. Like, they play that, like, so are you in the A style, but they do take a lot of risks. And I think about, against strong opposition, especially when they're playing against a team like DRG, who's great shooters, and that's the same again against Lev. Mm -hmm. Those kind of little mistakes, missed timings, mm -hmm. they could lose them a game today. Very true. Well, let's go ahead and find out some insights from a former world champion. We have Yinsu standing by with CNET. We have an incredible matchup ahead of us today. I'm now joined by CNED from Foot. Now, CNED, the last time you faced Asfaz at Champs, he eliminated, eliminated you uh, from that tournament. You're going to play against him today. Is there anything you want to say to him? Uh, last time we played against him, I played like better individually, but he eliminated uh, our team. I hope this time he played better, but we eliminate him. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, CNED. Well, you know, we have been blessed with a second face-off between two world champions, CNET and Aspas. Now, their last meeting was an awesome match at Champs last year. Every game went 13-11. You know, I mean, look, it's CNET, it's Aspas. You couldn't have asked for a better comparison. Yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, Aspas got the win, but CNET got the better individual performance. Hey. Right? So it, it's going to tie it up, but, you know, revenge is a... It's a a, house a dish house. best served cold. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not very cold here today in Shanghai, but nope. I, I think that he will be very, very happy to take that revenge. It's the coldest day since we've been here. Anyway, it, it's Why? a really... Because <laughs> that's true. But it, it's really an incredible matchup that we have ahead of us here. CNET, you know, I think most people after that peak when he won champions thought there was going to be kind of a, a fall off. He goes off, he plays with Na'Vi. We see him struggle for a mm -hmm. while, but now he's on a foot roster where he looks really comfortable. And it's the first time we really see him super happy, super involved with his team. Yes. And also just shooting back to that level when he won a championship. And it's really the same for all as well. I, th I think it's not the same for CNET because last year, even though he was with Na'Vi and he was trying to experiment a bit, he was never comfortable. He was, he was always in the back end. Now this year, he is the one making and proposing and let's do something different. I want to be better than just a jet player. Yeah, but then, you know, you got Leviathan's Aspas, who has always been Aspas. comfortable in every <laughs> single role, every single situation that he puts himself in here. And Mimi, I mean, this is going to be a fireworks show between these two teams. Yeah, both of these teams really, you'll sometimes see rounds just evolve into individual stuff. They're also both very similarly built, where they put a lot into enabling their duelist player. They give a lot of freedom. This is the most free we've ever really seen CNET in a roster. And for Aspas, so they give him so much of that same levity. For, for both of these guys, I think they are players that will define this matchup, and it's absolutely do or die. You're either going to make the playoffs today or get eliminated. A world champ is going home. That's right, and that is mind-blowing to think about. But you, we had a great match to start things off. We're going to close it out even better, baby. Let's send it over to the stage for Lev versus Foot. Final match of the Swiss stage. You win here, you move on to the playoffs. If you lose, your run in Shanghai ends 
today. And the difference between this matchup and the one we just saw is that we have two world champions on opposite sides of the field looking to bring it to one another because really, that's what it's all about. Win here and you move on. Yeah, exactly. And for foot, of course, this means a lot. We know that internationally, they haven't done their best, but they have also never once against an America's team. So today, they can make history. And as we look at the map, Vito, here, we're going to be starting off in pretty familiar territory for both of these teams on Sunset. That'll be the choice of Leviathan. They've had a really good record on this one, 4-1 to one after kind of flying on this breach gecko composition, which I think they implement really well. Their defense side in particular, they showed some excellent retakes when they started on the defense in their last game. That lead brought them to a dominant victory against T1. I mean, yeah, I can understand that they decide to go for, for the Sansa's Lotus, though it's it's very surprising that Foot keeps selecting this map. We know that they've been struggling in changing the compositions time and time again. Maybe there's a new one that they want to show. Maybe they found every single thing that went wrong last time. I mean, I'm just happy they, they've moved away from the Sage comp, that they were playing in EMEA with no initiator. I think it was at least an improvement, even if they I feel like they may, they may have used all their cards in EMEA, and now they come to the international stage, and we're like, oh, that's just a... But that's it makes Boring it tough to, to make it to yeah. this point. If you're playing through this Swiss stage as well, you're just you're off-putting so much VOD footage, so much yeah. for your yeah. opponents to prep against. And I think Leviathan is at their best when they have that time to, to go back and prep and prepare in both of the matches that, that they've been able to take home. And in that first map, even in the series they lost, I think it came down to game planning and prep to be at, to be at their best. And you really have to credit Coach Goket for putting that stuff together. 100%. Now, also another uh, familiar, like or I shouldn't say familiar, but interesting uh, sure. thing here is that uh, you are going to have this crowd white hot for Leviathan because there are a lot of people who are Aspas fans yeah. in the crowd. And we saw how much that played a role in that first series. FPX were just really feeding off of that energy to weld them back into the game. So, you know, if you're Leviathan, you have to feel a little good in your foot. You're probably approaching this one with a bit of a chip on your shoulder, ready to silence some people. Yeah, some of the people probably weren't, weren't even of, of age when Cena was uh, a world champion. <laughs> <laughs> It was like three years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a joke, baby. I don't, I don't mean it. But, that was uh, feel like forever ago. But yeah, we were, here, we were here in Rian saying how you can actually hear the crowd. Uh, and we see no surprises on the agent select here on Sunset. We know that Foot decided to pick this map against FPX, but, uh, uh, you know... It wasn't, it wasn't that was pretty. FPX. Yeah, exactly. On the defense, uh, it wasn't very bright. Probably that's what they decided to start on the attack. But Leviathan surely saw something there that made them go for this one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Think, you know, uh, perfect with this conversation. Sure, this conversation sure. So uh, for, I think, the, the biggest key to, to winning on this defensive side is trying to bait out the trap plays that Lev Lev to set up with that breach and also being proactive to disrupt the flood retakes that are so effective from Lev. Well, here we go. Last match of the Swiss stage. Let's Go ahead and send it over to your casters. It's Baby Bay and doing double duty, baby. It's Douglas. There was a lot of there was a lot of D's in there. A lot, a whole lot of there was a lot. Mm, I've got to find a better way to take that throw. Elimination, <laughs> <laughs> elimination on the line. And honestly, for this to be how the Swiss stage closes, Dre, I could not possibly ask for anything else. Yeah, we got two ex champions going head to head against each other. It's perfect, and it's going to be so much pressure from both sides. Elimination game, and you got to feel like foot. I mean, they haven't been playing with an advantage at all. The home crowd has always been against them. Two Chinese teams, now it's Aspas. Yeah. Full support. Speak of the devil. He will be getting first contact. Breaking that Roomba early on and just wants to give it there. A very slow approach from Foot, who got completely obliterated the last time they played this match against FPX. Okay. Team we unfortunately just had to bid adieu to. This is an awesome pistol round already from Foot, but the timing might not be there for them because Lev already ahead of this. That chip did not get broken. Cage trigger. It made a little bit of noise, but yeah, you're right. I don't know that it was enough. Lev have already put a lot of their defenses back here. Mazzino's looking to reposition with the utility that he can try to dump out onto the side. Meanwhile, Foot not really having created enough space to get out of elbow. Up until now, it's Mr. Fallen's the tip of the spear. The first one to go. A flash in the face of Tex, and he cannot stand strong. He cannot hold on. And now it's on to King. A 1v5 and a disastrous start for Lev as the flawless round goes the way of Foot. And another pistol round win 
for Mr. Fallen and Foot. They had an 80% win rate on pistol rounds this entire tournament so far going into this, and now it's even higher. They've been so good in these, man. And it's all off of him. Not only does he cook up the strats, but that breach C that he had on the comm there, there was nowhere for him to go. It was perfect. It was perfect. I imagine we're going to see another slow approach here going into the anti-eco round. Four foot. It will be a little bit of A control, though. Oh, that hurts. Mm hmm Good default utility used from foot. This is all going to be conditioning that we're going to see further in the half. With that being said, Aspas did walk down a little bit down mid, but Yereje is just holding for him. And with this elbow control, they can really just freeze the round, manipulate any rotations they want, and hold for a re-aggression. Yeah, they've kind of split them apart, haven't they? Yeah. And Mazzino here with this fault line. This could lead to disaster. Four foot. And he's been so great on this breach on this map. He's really been the difference Careful maker there. of why Lev is so dominant on a map like this. The value that he's been able to provide is immeasurable. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Not only in terms of like his actual ability to get kills, but his utility. Speaking of utility, dude, everything tagged him. It was a dizzy, I mean, it was the flash, it was <laughs> the, I mean, everything. Now Crack's pushing forward. Gang is held strong at least enough to get a couple of kills, leaving yet to JC Ned and Ada Captain alive, but the first two certainly worse for wear. Yeah, good damage done, and I mean, if Aspas can connect on a CNET here, this could be a really costly anti-eco round for the likes of Foot. And he's slowly going to be creeping up into the site. Foot proactive in this approach on the post plant, though, so they should have a, an idea, an inkling that he's crept in here from the CT side. Yeah, surely not giving him the one time high Ooh. low. <laughs> Snapped onto the first. Yeah. Not able to connect the second. Foot get theirs, they're able to carry two rifles into the next round as well. And they made it costly. That's all because King just tucking in that back default box on A. You had a bunch of players bait for him on the actual site. So when it came down to full clearing it, I mean, you don't expect another guy to be there. Right. Why is King there? This will be in a very important round for Lev to get on the board. And I imagine we're going to see a very similar approach to a lot of these rounds from foot. A very slow start. See what's going on with their default. Look, that's that default utility that was conditioned in the previous round, but King is ahead of this this time because he's playing in that elbow area. And he does this quite a bit. Well, he, he, he himself will do the one-way jump spot. He has the omen flash if he gets contact anywhere. Meanwhile, they're playing for contact on the other side. Aspas with a paranoia in his face. Had a captain sack, or excuse me, TPing forward and comms there to punish. And that's that fault line from Mazzino. Punishing out of captain. And Tex! It's from such a distance. How much more can they find? They've, been th they've thrown the brakes on this round. Anthony J and Mr. Fallen with so much to do, and yeah, it's just gotten a little bit easier, and that's now two down. You have to imagine those are two guns they're going to want going into that next round. Nobody else right now wants to go down for Lev. Otherwise, I mean, they're not going to really have much of a buy. Yeah, it gets really messy there. One they're going to be slow picking remaining. mid by themselves. The first one Spike falls. Yetuj with 56 mid. HP now left in that 1v3 with Outlaw in hand still. They found my wire. And I like the way they're playing this. It's very disciplined. They're not swinging left. into him. They even drop the paranoia, but King's position given away. Pull between his eyes. That was a nasty shot from Yetuj. Sitting at 4 0 already. Whoa! He's gotten high ground and he's gotten it down to 1. Calm has to pull this off on his own. He can also just be patient with it. He's got to take the fight! And he lands that shot, the Red Bull clutch for foot. It's what a start! It's disaster for Lev. They had the round one, but they were too eager to keep going for kills in mid. And the outlaw could be so strong. I mean, this shot, this was so cold against the champ. And then he just diffs calm in the 1v1. The discipline not quite there for Lev. They were up two players. And it's not how you want to start this series. But Doug, we've seen this before from Foot, where they acquire a big lead and then they just let it slip away. Yeah, true.
Yeah, you're not. I mean, you're not wrong about that. That fault line coming out from Azino. We've mentioned it a couple of times how good it is, how effective he is at using it. Attacap creeping forward. Mazino spotted, now killed. I know exactly where you are. I must wait a All intel Please. the way of foot right now. They see that A site's open, and CNET is able to take that B just for free. This is looking like a whole new team from foot. The pacing, the scaling. Meanwhile, Lev starting to have to reckon with these demons that have caused them problems. Really, the majority of the year. A team that feels like gives up situations okay. that they really shouldn't. Advantages that should be theirs, oh. unfortunately, go the other way. They're going to have to give a bit of the same medicine back to foot if they want to win this round. The big difference here is time is way more pressing. Tex and King have both upgraded weapons. Wingman to send it. Wingman to try to do it Last on his own. Tex would have to 1v3. It's half. He can't take the fight. Oh, he's on a tap. He's tagged him down. 70 HP, daring him to swing, beckoning him to challenge. But the spike will go off. Tex gets the kills, but the round goes the way of foot. A great post plan from foot. It got a little bit scrappy, but they just played the clock there. And it runs down to but, perfection. Yeah, but for Lev, I mean, those are all confidence kills. You just did a, what, a 2v4 retake and almost won the round? I mean, Tex almost took the head off of the Omen player there. Right at the end, but. I think, I think part of the issue though, Dre, is it, it has never felt like confidence is what lacks for this Lev squad. Right, like Tex does stuff like that. He does stuff like that all the time. It's, it's the bigger picture. It's when they have to come together, when the macro kind of falls apart when they're losing 3v5s and things like that. That's where it feels like they stumble. And it's so rare to see that on this map specifically. That's true. They're very good at this map. A Zino. big opener from Cracks onto Mizzino. Punished once more. Mr. Fallen with ult in hand. Oh, and the timing on the crunch is just beautiful. It's textbook. It's surgical. <laughs> Tex is going to have to put together another clip here. Numbers away of the attack. Thrash invested. A whole lot of homies on the map right now. A little bit of value found. A 2v3. Tex is caught. A little bit of help from Aspas. The flash is there. They knew, they expected him to be holding over his shoulder. And as the spike ticks away, Lever forced to sit back and watch. Not allowed to play. They're just delaying the time here. That wingman needs to get broken. And, and it, it does. does. Not even getting the half. And now they have the fall line. They still have all these darts. They have, I mean, it's it's clinical. Yeah. Dre, that crunch that they hit market, everything from top to bottom in that round went the way of foot. That was beautiful. A very good snowball so far from foot. Good use of the ultimates. A second gun round going their way. And even that thrash at the end there, it's all just to delay the time. Right. Mr. Fallen, the supplier with the fire in that situation. Early timeout. Yeah, early timeout called here. A pause on the side of Lev, who could probably not have imagined a worse start to this series. And it's all because of that bonus round. I mean, they had a 3v1 even at the end. Forget the first two that died top mid. Yeah, okay, sure. whatever. That happens. Whatever, yeah. yeah. You're trying to warm up. I get it. You want to show that you're confident against a team like Foot. But Foot got some aimers, man. And we saw that in prime effect with Yedege. A Turkish aim hits different. Man. That, was, that was crazy. Mazzino has struggled really to start things off. You know, we talked a lot about his utility and how effective he is on the breach. But it feels like every single time, he's the one getting picked. He's the one getting punished. It's really weird. It's it's uncharacteristic because usually he's not the one that's taking these first these first picks. You know these these opening fights. And if he does, he wins them. Yeah. Can't be doing that against the Turkish shame of foot. No. And now we're gonna see a change of pace. A heavy A default. There is a decent buy from Lev, so they will be able to fight fire with fire here. This goes here. And someone who I've been praising quite a bit on this left team has been calm, specifically on this map where he plays that sentinel role, that Cypher. 
I feel like he does a really good job of playing off the trips, knowing when to not play off the trips yeah. and give sight. He, he really hasn't had a chance to do that quite yet, though. But this could be a really good opportunity for them. Yeah, for him to shine, for him to lean into his utility and try to create some advantages his way, his team's way. Meanwhile, the rocket triggered, fired off, no kills found. But foot again, roll over the defense. Mazzino finally on the board. But still much more to do. Spike not planted. They're gonna have to try to do a 3v3 retake here for life to get on the board finally. Where is everyone hiding? Cypher alt for Cypher alt here. Info gathered from both sides, but Mr. Fallen sitting here with that flash. This is all to delay. Cracks looked like he was considering a flank around, a rewrap, but no, inside. Instead, he stays on site. He gets the best to come, looking for more. But he continues to get taggy, he continues to get peppered. Mr. Fallen still has to hold the line for him. He's got the fall line. That should cause a swing, and that's exactly what it does. Another round, the way of foot. This team of foot is so good at post plants, Doug. They're insane on them. I think the statistic is, is something ridiculous, one of the highest of this tournament. But this is that six round mark that we've seen so many times before. Yeah, this true. is where it tends to slip away. Maybe they just have more confidence. They're not going against an unconventional, unfamiliar style of a Chinese team. Maybe this can be the moment where they take the lead and run away with it. No real ults. I mean, Crax is more than halfway to his, but Mr. Fallen nowhere near. CNET nowhere near. Another opener of the way of foot. This is the foot we all know. They oh, contact in. My goodness. And then they explode the like this. Standing. That was right so decisive. Drop the spike. Cena just the spike. soaring through the site, smothering the opposition. Grenade. You can't play anywhere on that site. No, not at all. But then what are you going to do? You're just going to play off and try to retake with, with pistols? I mean, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you don't have the guns in your favor, I yeah. mean, sometimes you, you got to just go for broke. And I don't imagine that Ospos will win this 1v5, or 1v4, I should say. And I do have the actual stat. Before this match, Foot, this whole tournament long, they've been 32 for 37 on post plants. That's an 86% that's, conversion rate. That's stupid, man. And then you think about that, and you're like, how have the games even been close? Yeah. How are they not even in the playoffs? Yeah. They, they shouldn't be here. Right? <laughs> if they keep winning like that, it, I mean, they just have no business being down here. Maybe it was nerves before, maybe it was something else, but they're not slowing down right now. No. Up 7-0 against the number three seed from America is a team that was built to compete for championships. This was not a team with expectations of being sent home in groups on the international stage. I mean, you've got some heavy hitters here. You've got two world champs. <laughs> you've got Kam and Aspas on your team. you got King, who was the brightest spot on every time last year. Yeah, my brother. Here. Tex comes through Ascension. He's the real deal. He continues to improve. He continues to impress. This is a team that shouldn't be in this position. And it felt like they really turned a leaf and that they were like unstoppable towards the latter end of the season and in that playoff yeah. to qualify for this land. Yeah, it seemed like they'd figured something out, but it's almost like they left whatever they learned back home. Look at this contact style. Usually stuff like this can work against you, but that's Mazzino falling again. That's what we've been saying. And now all that utility that we've been talking about is ineffective. Oh. Wait a second. He's, oh, this he's is dirty. For he's waiting for the other. Heard two sets of footsteps. Only is able to get one. A 5v3. Again. They just need a death ball here. I imagine they might even invest another thrash here. Just secure the round. It's the rich getting richer, man. <laughs> yeah. They have so many things they can lean into. They have so many advantages. Great tag fault line. And the tag under the cam was really nice. Into the smoke. Comp's able to get two, but has to run away. Traded, though. A 2v2 now. The spike down. Aspas has his rocket. Right on cue, triggered. Looking for a target. He's got to find it. He tries to get him up. And a captain snuffs out the wick. What was that? The captain taking things into his own hands. 
Asbos, it's so rare to see this guy sitting at one and eight. Right there. But now you know why. That was a showstopper right there. He just gets his head taken clean off. And Com did such a good job of bringing this round back. It was off of the utility that you were talking about a couple of rounds ago and how yeah. good he is oh with my. it. That's unbelievable. That yeah, guys, we got <laughs> yeah, the same reaction, exactly. bro. Everybody yep. did. Everybody did. And you can tell the, the crowd is completely silent here. And that's, that's the second yeah. timeout called. You have to, though. You have to somehow stop the bleeding. What a start, man. And it, honestly, it felt like Yetu J's positioning there at the at the middle of the round where he heard Aspas and he gets the best to come. That really feels like if you could take a micro shot of how this half has gone, that was it. Yeah. Right there. Where Footer just, I mean, they're two, three steps ahead of what's going on here. Jeez. This has been a ridiculous start. Four foot. <laughs> Left need to stop the bleeding here. They absolutely have to. And the thing is, is if they do, if they can do that, they've seen other teams bring, the, bring it all the way back. Yeah. And maybe that can build them confidence. But I mean, if you let it get too far out of hand and give foot too much of a buffer, uh, could be a disaster. The only one positive oh, on Leviathan right now is Tex, the player from Ascension. Meanwhile, something you said earlier, I mean, you're absolutely right about, man. When was the last time you saw Aspas 1-8? I, I, I have no clue. I don't, yeah. I don't think I've ever. But Foot has just played this to perfection. The slow, silent walk and approach has been work, working really well against Leviathan. Maybe they're just not warmed up, not dialed in on their crosshairs quite yet. Oh my gosh! The he takes himself out with that showstopper, but he gets one. One for ones. The problem is, nobody cares about whether or not you're warmed up on that day. Yeah. Nobody remembers that. Crash invested, cracks clearing space. Atta Captain should be able to fill behind it, or he's just going to hold on to mid and continue to cause problems. And Cracks is able to pick that thrash up again for the post plant. Had a captain left on the other side of this trip. Meanwhile, the roll is thunder out as they try to flood him behind the site. They've drawn out the ult. They're going to flip back mid. They're going to flip back A. Had a captain gets caught. Tried tucking under the trip. Honestly, I respect it. I would have tried the same thing. Caught but not punished. And now he can keep at least two players here. He can listen for the rotation. Calm has to go huge here, Doug. He's on his own. Great opener. How much more can he get? 13 seconds left. They're comfortable slowing things down. They realize time is on their side. Now the ult's invested. Keep an eye on Atta Captain. He finally falls with five seconds left. Thrash on the way. Com not able to hold the line. Spike down just barely. And Tex falls. 9 0 the way of foot. That was their best chance. And that one's gone out of hand, too. I mean, when you think that you've taken so many left turns, surely it's going to go right sometime. But it's just not happening. A 9-0 lead. And a great fault line. A great setup for that market split. And then baiting out the breach ult. It was perfect. From Mazzino. It was perfect. Falling back. Oh my gosh. But still, the trading is not there for Lev. It's that discipline that I was speaking of earlier. It's just not there. It doesn't seem like there's anything there for Lev right now. Tex, the only shining star, gets taken out. The trades once more going in favor of Foot. And another free bomb plant, man. This is this is such a showing right now. Cracks will get a little bit closer to having his ult online. Did he dink him? He dinked him yeah. on that fadeaway tap. I know exactly but Aspas right. finally Spike coming online, getting two big kills. 3v2, the way of the defense, but six HP among two of the members. And the spike is sitting on the other side of this. They're going to have to frag their way through Leviathan if they want to win this round. The thing is, they've done it at every single turn. And now an attempt to do it again. Aspas clearing the cam, looking for the fight. Yet 3J waiting on the other side of the box. The fall line will connect. The swing will come through, and Aspas will fall once more. I just don't understand. King ulted all the way to B site. 
Yeah, I don't know. He left Osboss on an island. And Mr. Fallen. 30 seconds left. I mean, I thought it was Mazino who had great bre breach utility. But it's actually Mr. Fallen that's been the one with the great breach utility so far. I don't know if if King thought the hit was going back B and they had rotated out. I'm not I'm not sure. I yeah. Was it a misclick or something? That's you cancel that. That's a, a huge blunder, though. right? And they knew they had bomb as well, so it's, where are you going? Enemy remaining. This is so uncharacteristic of King and the rest of the squad of Leviathan. I mean, Tex looks like he's the only one that came here to play for map one. Aggression down mid again. Aspas did this the last round, but look at the utility to, to stop him. And then this! Atta Captain holds the line. Two down in the face of the aggression. A tragic start for Lev. Amateur. They're still able to find a little bit of value playing around comms cages. Out of Captain TPing away. He's going to be able to get deep into spawn. He's going to be able to try to control the rotations as best out. as he can. The smoke's coming through. Asma should be yeah. able, able to get ahead of it, though. And with a minute left on the round, they they have time to flip this back if they want to. Shadows traveling. And he's able to do this because they're sitting at such a big buffer. Why not take a risk? I mean, somebody could have been there. Oh, a thousand percent. And then he's just three gonna keep going. That's three. Even if they are there, he might not care. And right there. Another dominant round. Jeez. From foot. 11-0. Lev did not show up on Sunset. They haven't. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to jinx it. It's just unbelievable how good Foot look right now. It's 11 0. All of the words. Unbelievable. Ridiculous. And they don't have, I mean, <laughs> there's no other way to slow the game down. There's no, no other way to ice this thing. No. At this point for Lev, I mean, I'm sure they even know that this is going to be the toughest ask. It wasn't one. clean, yeah, it wasn't clean, but he got one. Oh, this one, the thrash in his face. Out of Captain gets a second. Numbers the way, the attack, the paranoia out. Mazzino's the first there. And he's flashed. Cracks. Trying to challenge. He takes a little bit of damage for him. Mazzino now looking to get active, looking to push forward. Two taken down. Yep, DJ will fall as well. CNET in a 1v2. Surely they hear this. Unless the sound of the nade covered his footsteps. There is a cam in B main and a trip B main, though. He's not going to have to reckon with any of it, depending on how he plays. That is true, but it could give Lav the info required to just figure out systematically where CNET is playing. Oh, there you go. Oh, this cam will be the cue as well. Oh, he's repositioning. You would think he's tucked back main, but he's playing tight. He's playing close. CNET in 1v2 to keep the game perfect. Cannot. Aspas will get Leviathan there first. And they needed to make a mark. They needed to make a dent. Who other than Aspas to do it for them? But it's been a rough one. You can't help but feel like this one just might be too much of a lead to come back from. One enemy remaining. Yeah, I would have to agree. This was just such a dominant, dominant performance. Almost 12 rounds. If it doesn't go, if the 1v1 doesn't go the way of Aspas, you're looking at a 12-0 lead. We're gonna throw it to an Omen player moments and take a listen to Yetu J, who's currently sitting at 16 and two right now for foot. Hello guys, I am Yetu J from FUTL Sports. Yeah, it was so hard. We wasn't expect that much harder, but we win, that's all. When we lose first match, my coach said like, just play your game. That happens, like, we can lose, we can win. Just try to be team, support each other. My mentality is like, uh, we can lose. We can lose every match, we can uh, maybe eliminate it today. But if we lose with good gameplay, like, if we lose because they are better, uh, that means, like, that's a lesson for us. We're gonna be just upgrade ourselves more. Swings back in and connects on to Luke. 
Ice has gotten three! How in the world does he get away with that? I'm so happy to play against Leverden. I think it's good and it will just upgrade us. I love Aspas so much. I really like him gameplay. And I'm just waiting for him to come my traps and die. We're gonna win next match. That's all. Well, it's been the foot show this entire half, this entire map so far. And there are plenty of people who are excited about that. 11-1, the way of the number three seed from EMEA. Lev look lost. They look like a shell of the team that <laughs> qualified for this tournament. Foot look way more comfortable now going up against a more conventional style of play. And it's night and day. But I still did not expect this. No, I didn't either. Honestly, the way we saw Foot look the last time they were on the stage. On this map, they got obliterated. Yep. Like, not even close. But I guess that could work to their favor, and maybe Lev thought that, you know, it would be an easy one. It's been anything but, if that was the case. And I say this quite a bit, but at this point for Lev, any round, I mean, it counts. It matters. It gives you momentum going into the next map, which is Lotus. And Lev aren't really good. They've lost the last three Lotuses they've played. Cam spotting one, maybe two, but cleared. Left have taken a little bit of space mid, but if they decide to go back B, they're going to have to reckon with this triple stack. Oh, CNED in a lead, he's just so confident playing like this. I mean, you really have to push him off. You have to use bodies, utility. He will sit here and disrespect you until he gets punished. That's where he gets scary, man. Yep. Had a capture, has a paranoia. Invested, did not tag Aspas, but there is a little bit of help. The, the ball nade. line did, they're all dead, man. There's nowhere for them to go unless Aspas can fight back. He's still alive, he's still there. 22 HP, looking for the spam, Aspas with three. The snap is pretty, but they still have to win the round. I don't think he's fighting yet, 2J. Oh. Two players sitting at one apiece. 30 seconds Khan left. has to find a window here. Or try to hold the site itself. Yeah, but Mr. Fallen did hear that. Right oh, there. He and he spots him. him. He's the healthy one, too. He dodged that fault line. Really nice fault line. That's still going to buy some space, so it's going to allow safe passage across him for them to get through. Into the breach seat, potentially. He doesn't use it. Patience on the swing from EF2J. Comp falls, and again, that's the healthy one. Aspas will fall. Mazzino, the last piece, crumbles as well. The slaughter continues. The battle of the breaches, and Mr. Fallen has come out on top this entire map. There's not a silver lining here, man. Mazzino's supposed to be the one that has the greatest utility on this map. He's so known for it. In North America, at least. But Mr. Fallen, he's proven something different here today. Yeah, dude, did such a good job playing around that breach utility that you were referring to. Yeah. Gaius is all smiles, man. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you're thinking about Lotus. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Not a Lotus that you haven't won? Yeah. In, well, unfortunately, it's in, not a good thought. In forever, you, yeah. Right, so Lev obviously you have to force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got some, they got a couple of Stingers, a Guardian for Aspas. I mean, when in doubt, Stinger it out. You know. Is that, is that how the saying goes? I mean, it has to go that way this time, right? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you're just getting diffed in, like, the actual aim duels, maybe the run gun yeah. would be the deciding factor in winning a round. Get a little RNG for you. Hopefully. Play the game in your favor. Yikes. Oh, my gosh, cracks. It's a blender. It's disaster. Gun here. Last time we saw that from him, it was with the sheriff yesterday. Today, it's with the bulldog. But the outcome is the same. Full control, my friend. That's how the saying goes, right? I think so. <laughs> so Tex left a 1v3 to prolong this map a little bit more.
spike, committing wings. to the spike plant. 30 seconds left. Using util. No challenge. And he gets hit by the fault line. I mean, this guy, this breach play for Mr. Fall needs to be studied. I don't know that he's missed. Oh my gosh, another one. I don't one. know that he's missed a single bit of utility, but it might not matter. He gets his one kill, but that was Defenders win. that was rough you know uh, for Lev. And know what it was? The most decisive map of this tournament so far. I mean, that's exactly what that was. It just doesn't get any easier than that. Unbelievable, 13-1. <laughs> We're headed to Lotus. We'll see you guys on the other side. Let's go! I made it to my happy place. Got the sun in my eyes and a smile on my face. Yeah. I made it to my happy place. It ain't raining in a while. Woke up early today. I feel good. Happy face. I'm so happy that I made it to my happy place.